that down right away and let me take some snapshots and that's great it reminds me of the renaissance almost through the great lights and darks with that one so you do shows often yeah, I've, I've seen your shows at Quebecca and, and other play and Bistro Betham what do you want people to when they leave after seeing your work what do you want them to, to come away with like what do you want them to think of or, or say about your work um, great craftsmen uh, great draftsmen great you know great ideas great feeling I mean uh, that's a great question in my own work I strive to perfect my my realistic techniques mm -hmm. but really what I want the viewer to come away with is a reaction a feeling a mood of the painting a you know sometimes you just look at something and and know you either like it or it some piece pieces can make you angry some right. can make you do you try remember. to do, that? Do, you, do you do do you stoke people a little maybe put a piece in there that you know might I don't know instill a reaction that maybe a negative one well not as much as I try for the the positive ones yeah yeah, yeah. now these, these little ones right up up top here are really sort of interesting they look like they're carved out of wood and mm -hmm. then you painted is that right well somebody carved the wood not me okay I renovated my bathroom and these were the drawer fronts no kidding from my old vanity oh, that's excellent. and I thought gosh they're solid wood it's beautiful wood I just really want to do something oh that's great and these are my nieces Hannah and Katie yeah it's funny I, I when you said that it was like of course yeah of course they're drawer fronts but I didn't see that it's funny you said that um, are, are you inspired by other artists or do you think you're more inspired by real life well, both. I, I'm definitely inspired by other artists, local artists. We have a wealth of artists locally, yourself included. Right, right. You are one of my inspirations. Right, right. All right, this is about you, sure. Okay, okay. Right. But then there are some of the, the great masters, of course, and there are some portrait painters that are currently active that I admire. You gain an inspiration from everything yeah you know right I don't I can't live with blinders on I right. have to okay well hey st stick around one more break okay we're gonna be right back and we're gonna talk about uh, framing with Cheryl Bosch and, and she's also a gallery and going to talk about owning a gallery uh, we'll be right back with Artscape Welcome back to Artscape. I'm your host, Bill Harris, and we are here with framing expert and artist Cheryl Bosch. Cheryl, I thought this, ep this uh, segment we'd talk a little bit about framing. Okay. So, let's say I have a painting at home, unframed. Where do I start? What, what are some of the things I need to uh, consider? Well, framing does several things. It, it preserves, it protects, and it beautifies. It, it finishes, in my opinion. Right it finishes the painting and those things are what your local framer can help you put together so that you have a a framing package that's going to do all of that right I think that's probably a good way to putting it finishes it and and often often makes it look better hopefully um, do you think do you think it could ever be overdone I mean you think oh, or, or, or it could certainly detract from the painting of course right which none of yours do of course because <laughs> you, you expertly frame them now let's talk about the piece right behind us here this is um, the pastel yes uh, yeah it's great great piece um, how did you go about picking the mats in the frame looking looking at the image you know, how do you then where do you go well Usually the top mat is a, a color that's very abundant in the piece. It's an overall tone. The gray here that goes around. Yes. And the bottom mats, in this case, the reddish brown and the black, are accent colors that, want, that you want to pick out, to pull out. Mm -hmm. If I had brought the blue out, that might have been more prominent. Instead, I wanted to highlight the, the reddish brown and the, the black just to pop that a little bit. And the frame is this almost the same color as the, the, the brown mat running through there. Yes. Trying to keep it somewhat neutral so that the frame doesn't detract, but that it, it brings your eye in. Mm -hmm. And because the brown is under the gray, the brown of the frame, your eye is drawn from the frame to the, the mat, 
and then to the piece. Okay, kind of sucked in. Yes. Right. Um, y you know, one of the things we hear being in the art world is, and you hear this a lot, is, wow, framing's expensive. It's more expensive than I think most people think. I think, I think people don't appreciate the work that's involved with that. I mean, what do you think people don't understand about framing? You know, that 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 it, it sometimes it can be expensive, but but I think I think people sometimes are missing out exactly what's involved in it and how much work is involved in it. Well, framing can be very expensive, but it can also be the lesser end. There's a huge range there. Sure. And what people don't understand is that a simple oak versus a gilded gold ornate is going to have a, a huge price difference. Right. Um, those are, the, are some things that, that people don't understand. They'll, they'll pull a, a burl, for instance. A burl wood is made out of the knotty part of wood. Of a, Which is of pretty a rare, tree. I suppose, right? Yes. Right. So it's more expensive than just a straight wooden frame. And the, they'll pull that down. Let's compare this to that. And it can be shocking. It, it can yeah, be. Right. I know. Uh, one thing to consider, though, is there are a lot of do-it-yourself ways that artists can frame their own work. Mm -hmm. A lot of the local framers will build you a frame, and you can put it together or put your artwork in it yourself. That saves a ton of money. Yeah, I'm always amazed that you know because I curate some shows that, that even artists sometimes have no idea how to frame. Yeah, you know, it's almost like they should teach a class on it in art school or something that. You know, I'm often having paintings dropped off that where there's nothing on the back. And you ever think it's appropriate to not frame something, or let's let's say a canvas? Uh, sometimes I'll see maybe it's just painted on the sides, or, or or just left unpainted. Some of the deeper canvases that they're making now mm -hmm. are made so that you just paint the sides okay. and call it done. And sometimes that works. It's a very casual look. Yeah. But. I'm a framer. Right, I like right, right. frames. Yeah, and I, I guess it would be sort of difficult to frame those really, really deep ones. Well, it's it's the the rabbit, yeah. the depth of the frame. You just need a deeper frame. Yeah, I've always thought that if I'm showing a painting in a gallery, that I think people should be able to take it off the wall and hang it in their home, not have to invest more money into framing. You know, as an artist, I think that. And, you know, I agree somewhat. Now, I, I would say this, though. I'm not a great framer. And, and I always say, hey, you can do better. And there's certainly a lot of great framers like yourself in the area. Well, and also, a lot of times, uh, a framing style is very personal. Yeah. And you buy something that somebody else has framed, you often want to make it more your own. Right. Make it your style. So in that case, you, there probably is a lot of rights. Like, there's probably a lot of ways you could have framed this that it would have been right. Most definitely. Right. And, and maybe some could cater to the, the person's own house, maybe match colors in their home and things like that. Or go from casual to formal right. or things in between. You can have a funky frame or a, a conservative frame, things right. like that, that kind of style. Why the one, the one behind you, which is oils, doesn't have glass? I know why, but what, why? And now this one, the pastel, does have glass. What's yes. The, what's the well, the pastel is done on paper. Okay. Paper needs the protection of the glass for the environmental changes in the in the place where it's hanging. It needs to be in the framing package. Okay. Whereas a canvas needs to breathe. Okay. So you, so you know, putting glass, glass on could damage it over time, right? Yes. Sort of. Okay. Museums use glass on their canvases, but they space it way out. Mm -hmm. So there's a, an air pocket in there. There's a breathing room. Okay. And that's probably so people don't touch it, too. Yeah. Right, that's... right. Um, let's just shift a little bit, because you, you are a member of Brushstrokes, and, and, and at Frame Designs, uh, you also curate shows there. You said you do about four shows a year there. Mm -hmm. um, what, what do you think some of the, the important things, like when you're curating a show that you'll look for? Like, let's say if you're going to do a show at Frame Designs, and an artist approaches you, what are the, some of the things you, you think you look at their work for? The, yeah, this would make a good show. Or Well, proficiency. You know, yeah. they, they should have, have mastered somewhat their craft, uh, have a variety of, of work to show me their, their style. Right. Um, I like to have artists that might be a little different, might have more abstract or realist 
just have a variety. Yeah, as opposed to a theme. I've always heard that too. Some people like to do a theme show. Uh, myself, I like. I, I, I agree with you. I like to have variety. Where you, you know you go to each painting, it's a sort of a new experience. Um, Okay. Hey, um, do you want to tell us that you have any shows coming up, or I do. I have two shows this summer. In June and July, I'll be showing at Sammy T's, okay. and the artist reception will be first Friday in June. And then in July, I'm the featured artist at Brushstrokes, and that first Friday will have my artist reception there. Oh, excellent! So, a member of Brushstrokes, you get a show once a year or, or something. Well, right now we have 20 artists. So I get on a list with 20 other people and we alternate. So okay. it's about 20 to 22 months in case we have sh uh, okay. months without featured art All right. artists. Well, well, thanks for joining us today, Cheryl. My pleasure. That was great. And uh, thank you for joining us. And I'm your host, Bill Harris. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions, you can, you can contact me at billharrisart at comcast.net. And until next time, this has been Artscape.